build things because you can and it doesn't need to be anything more than whatever comes out you know and 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 there's value in that so jake we've discovered a library yeah my office <laughs> and this is a beautiful space yeah, i am uh super impressed with the the figma offices i you know i like i feel like High tech offices always feel like high tech offices, and this yeah. this doesn't feel like that. It's great. I, I work from home in Chicago, and so anytime I come out here, I'm just like, ah, wouldn't it be nice to <laughs> like, have this every day? Yeah, absolutely. When the web started, that we didn't know what it was for. Yeah, it was like it was almost like a toy, right? And there famously, there are quotes from people saying like, ah, the internet won't last another few years. It's a fad. It's all going to go away. Um, and so it sort of unlocked this this. I, this ability for us to play with no consequences because we just assumed everything was temporary. Yeah. And as it's proven as a, a layer for commerce, yeah. uh, it, it feels like that ability to play yeah. has been sort of tamped down. Yeah. But the individuals, the artists, the creators, the just like people who just want to goof around with their friends, they're still there. Yeah. But it, it feels like there are fewer and fewer places for us to do yeah. that goofy stuff. Um, how are you finding those outlets? As a community and as technologists, I think it's very important for us to be kind of reinvesting back into creativity as a group to kind of uplift the excitement. I remember the days like early code pen days where everyone's just being super expressive and all like that's entirely community driven and led, right? right? Um, the opportunity to do that is still around, but it's not necessarily happening in my circles as much as it used to. And I think that's the second arm of this fight, which is like, we're also getting older and have more responsibilities and our, our careers are advancing. And, and, and so continuing to bring creativity to our lives becomes a bigger like effort. It, it becomes intentional as opposed you, to incidental. Yeah, and, and, and you need a lot more in, in intent and time and capacity and these things that are so hard to come by as, as you grow. I feel like you have found ways to fit this into yeah. your life, despite, yeah. you know, Out of necessity. the career yeah. grows, the, the demands grow, yeah. you know, you, you get like, I don't know, as you get older, it just feels like responsibilities yeah. pile up. So how are you creating time? I'm just getting obsessed with it, and that just translates to me forcing time in my life. <laughs> it feels like that's how that goes, you know? You just kind of force the priority. But what's so hard about that is you have to actually feel it to actually make that happen, and sometimes feeling it's the hardest part. So right. recently, you know, I go through big periods of drought on a lot of things, you know, in terms of personal projects. Um, and that can actually be really hard for someone who cares so much about it, it like because it's such a core part of why I enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, the sorts of things that I try to find time for is like, reduce the complexity of what I'm doing. I think, yeah, and, and what I like about the idea of keeping things simple is that, you know, a lot of times I will have an idea and I'll start to scale it up because, well, I yeah. want people to be able to save their progress. I want people to be able to invite their friends. And suddenly I'm looking at like, I need an OAuth solution. I need a database. I need yeah. some kind of long running server. I got to bring in all this stuff. And exactly. I, I get so overwhelmed with the infrastructure of what I want to create that I never actually make the thing. Like I have this project that I've been working on for five, six years on and off. And it's, it's, it's a Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. that I just plug in into my local network. And it has APIs for, uh, WebRTC, it has APIs for WebSockets, it has APIs, and I basically just serve static websites over the local network. I don't have to worry about authentication. I don't have to worry about, I have a file system writing API so I can write, I can upload photos to the Pi from my like local network. Just like a sandbox to kind of just play around. And I was thinking, how cool would it be if you had a, a website console like that, that just like sits in your local network. People just make static apps that just run in the local network and that's all it does. You don't need it to be like storing your data on someone else's server, or authenticating users or any of that sort of a thing. But like, that's exactly in line, I think with what you're saying is it's like, it's kind of a complex idea. Like I had to like learn some stuff to make a box like that. But then once you're there, it's like what it enables is just this like, 
oh yeah, web technology is great. And we think of it so narrowly in terms of like, well, you ha you're gonna have to come up with an auth solution in order to save any data in the server. And in order to, you know, you wanna rate limit so that someone can't come along and DDoS you. And it's like, what if we just also so thought about that. not even thinking about that? Well, and, and especially when yeah. we're working with stuff that doesn't matter. Like if I'm not yeah. collecting anybody's personal data, yeah. if I'm not storing anything other yeah. than like, I don't know, some points, yeah. like, a, like a numeric value, yeah. who cares? Yeah. Like, it's okay. If somebody wants to come in and be a jerk, yeah. like that's a bummer. But it doesn't it doesn't cost anything yeah. other than we have to reset the high score table. You know, yeah. like we get so in our heads about the work of yeah. stuff and and it becomes this sort of like, well, I can't do that because it's not valuable. Like how would I sell this? How would I monetize yeah. this? How would how would I get my my company to endorse this or whatever? Yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah. what if I didn't? Like yeah. what if none of those things mattered and I just made a thing because it's fun to make? Yeah. And you, in, in that, like, what I hear people push back with, what I hear my brain push back with is, well, then what, you know, how does it help you? You've got so little time. How are you going to grow and progress and so on? So then if you, if you approach it from the standpoint of like, well, I'm still learning something. Yeah. Like yeah. I built a silly thing, but look what I learned as I did that. Absolutely. And I can apply that to work. Yep. Yep. And I mean, that's, that was what, why CodePen was so special to me early on in my career was like, that was, those were the. Those were the learnings. Like yeah. my first for loop was like SAS in CodePen, oh, right? Yeah, like that's yeah, how yeah. I began to learn those programming concepts, mm -hmm. you know? And you create those reasons to learn, um, even if they're not best practice or whatever, like the, the fodder for that is going to be creativity, you know? Yes. And the way to kind of like get excited. And like you said, that what you said about pushing through is so much easier when it's something you care about and you're being creative and it's a personal idea. Mm -hmm. Like I literally gave a talk about that in 2016 personally to a small audience because that that's exactly the story for me. And it's like, yeah, it's so true. And 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 what can be hard is that like it can be it can be disappointing when you feel like you don't have an opportunity to do that or nothing's right. coming to you. Um, and I think for me the key there was community uh, to really kind of reignite when things started to get stale. Where, where are you finding that community now? Because I've noticed the meetup scene seems really quiet. Yeah, definitely. And I, you know, I use CodePen. I love CodePen, you yeah. know, whenever I'm on there, I see something yeah. cool, but I don't feel like I'm, I feel like I'm looking at other people's work, yeah. not connecting to other people. Yeah. Uh, Twitter doesn't feel like it's doing much it was, in that space. And then it's not for me anymore. Yeah. I'm like, really struggling with that. Like I don't have a lot of that in my life. It's something that's been really encouraging. This is funny because like this wasn't supposed to necessarily be Figma content explicitly, mm. but like the design community in Figma does this. Like they've got That's this cool. going big time. Like and and people do things in Figma just to see how far they can push it. I, I'm really excited to hear that that that's happening in the Figma community because I I used to go to Dribble for that. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like the Dribble energy tapered off at some point. Yeah. And I looked elsewhere and I just never yeah. really found it. So um, for the on the design side, I didn't know where to go either. So at least there's a place to look there. Yeah. But on the on the dev side, I love the CodePen community. I love the uh, the like the CSS community. I think what yeah. like you know Unicravitz and Adam Argyle and yeah. that crew is always doing really interesting stuff yeah. in that space, and they yeah. they seem to be sharing yep. and, and volleying ideas. Um, but I hope it turns into more personal websites. Yeah. I like, mean, yeah, absolutely. Personal websites for no value other than saying, yeah. I'm here. Yep. Like the original, you know, yeah. like a MySpace profile. Just make it look like you, yeah. you know, try to get the inside of your soul painted on a screen. Yeah. And it's okay if it doesn't have any business value. Absolutely. Build things because you can. And there's, it doesn't need to be anything more than whatever comes out, you know? And, and, and there's value in that. And it doesn't need to translate to a skill set that's gonna pay you money in the future. It doesn't have to do that. It can, but if- Well, in any yeah. amount of practice, will. Yeah, absolutely. That's another, I mean, there is a long run benefit in it. And um, I, just, I just hope that we don't obfuscate the simplicity of the web so much that it's not as approachable as it has been, you know? Um, but the good news is, is it's still pretty dang approachable. And I love it. Seems like it's getting more approachable too. We've Absolutely. More, more power in HTML, more power yeah. in CSS, more yeah. built-in JavaScript yeah. APIs. You can yeah. work without a bundler. You can work without- I love um, it. You know, you don't need a- Modules, amazing. It's beautiful. I don't want to compile anything ever again. Good.
Thank you so much. Good talk.